Believe it or not, Warren Buffett wasn't born a billionaire. He had to start out with a small amount of money just like the rest of us. If you want to learn how you can start with little or no money and become rich, this video is for you. Today, we will listen to Warren Buffett share lessons on how to grow your money from a small sum. Hope you guys enjoy. Good afternoon, Mr. Buffett and Mr. Munger. My name is Grant Morgan. I'm here from New York City. Earlier, you had acknowledged that it is a more difficult investment and business environment today than it was when you first started out. My question is, if you were starting out again today in your early 30s, what would you do differently or the same in today's environment to replicate your success? In short, Mr. Buffett, how can I make $30 billion? Start young. <laughs> Charlie's always said that the, the big thing about it is we, we uh, started building this little snowball on top of a very long hill. So we started at a very early age in rolling the snowball down. And of course, the snowball, the nature of compound interest is it behaves like a snowball of sticky snow. And, and uh, the trick is to have a very long hill, which means either starting very young or living very, to be very old. The, I, you know, I would do it exactly the same way if I were doing it in the investment world. I mean, if I were getting out of school today and I had $10,000 to invest, I'd I'd start with EAs. I would start, I would start going right through companies, and I, I probably would focus on smaller companies because I would be working with smaller sums and there's more chance that something is overlooked in that arena. Uh, and as Charlie has said earlier, it won't be like doing that in 1951 uh, when you could leaf through and find all kinds of things that, that just leapt off the page at you. But that's the only way to do it. I mean, you have to buy businesses. And you, or little pieces of businesses called stocks, and you have to buy them at attractive prices, and, and you have to buy them, in, you have to buy into good businesses, and that advice will be the same 100 years from now in terms of investing. That's that's what it's all about, and you can't expect anybody else to do it for you. I mean, uh, uh, people will not, they will not tell you about uh, uh, wonderful little investments. There's, it's it's not the way the investment business is set up. When I first visited Geico in January of 1951, I, and I, that, that rest of that year, I subsequently went down to Blythe and Company, and uh, actually to um, to one other firm that was a leading Geyer and Company that was a leading analyst in insurance, and you know I thought I'd discovered this wonderful thing, and I'd see what these great investment houses that specialized in insurance stocks said, and they said I. I didn't know what I was talking about. You know, they, they, it wasn't of any interest to them. You've got to follow your own. You know, you, you've got to learn what you what you know and what you don't know. And within the arena of what you know, you have to just you have to you have to pursue it very vigorously and and act on it when you find it. And you can't look around for people to agree with you. You can't look around for people to even know what you're talking about. You know, you have to you have to uh, you have to think for yourself. And if you do, you'll find things. If you have the time and ability to research individual stocks, it can be very profitable. The goal is to look for stocks that you believe will significantly outperform the S&P 500 index, which itself generates on average a 10% return per year. The only way to find valuable stocks or companies is to do your own research and get your hands dirty. Buffett recommends looking into smaller companies as they have more room for growth. This would refer to small cap companies. I always analyze a company's competitive advantage, economic moat due to intellectual property, patents, economies of scale, barriers to entry, also the financial strength, such as zero to low debt, high profit margins, net cash flow, and the management team, a team that is thinking proactively about future growth and an ethical team. Researching and picking individual stocks is time consuming and difficult. Many people don't have the time or expertise to research individual stocks. If that is the case, index fund investing is the way to go. Investing in index funds gives you the benefit of strong performance, beating out 90% of actively managed funds, diversification essential to spreading the risk of your portfolio, and tax efficiency as index funds tend to have significantly lower turnover than actively managed funds. 
However, if you're able and willing to put in the work, investing in individual stocks can be profitable. Charlie? Yeah, the, the hard part of the process for most people is the first $100,000. Uh, if you have a standing start at zero, uh, getting together $100,000 is a long struggle uh, for most people. And I would argue that the people who get there relatively quickly are helped if they're passionate about being rational, very eager and opportunistic, and uh, steadily underspend their income grossly. I think those three factors are, are very helpful. In my experience, the first $100,000 was definitely the most difficult. It is hard to make money when you have no money. For most people, we make money from W-2 jobs whether it is by hourly pay or salary. The key is to start early by putting aside a percentage every paycheck to invest with, whether it is 5%, 10%, 20%, or even 50%, which may seem ridiculous, but people have different spending habits and bring home a different income. Once it becomes a habit to put aside money for investing, you will allow the power of compounding to take effect, and your investments or money will snowball and make you more money. Recently at a talk at the Wharton Business School, uh, Mr. Buffett, you indicated that you were talking about the problems of compounding large size, uh, which I appreciate and understand. But you indicated, uh, you're quoted in the local paper as saying that you're confident that if you were working with a sum closer to a million dollars, that you could compound that, that at a 50% uh, rate. For those of us who aren't saddled with the $100 billion problem, uh, could you talk about uh, what types of investments you'd be looking at and where uh, in today's market you think significant inefficiencies exist? Thank you. Yeah, I, I think I may have been very slightly misquoted, but I certainly said something to the effect that working, I, I think I, I, I talked about this group I get together every two years and how I poll that group as to what they think they could compound money at it with 100,000, a million, 100 million, a billion and other types of sums. and. I pointed out how this group of 60 or so people that I get together with every couple of years, how their expectations of return would go very rapidly down this slope. Uh, it is true. I think I, I think I can name a half a dozen people that I think could compound a uh, million dollars, or at least they could earn 50% a year on a million dollars, have that as an ex expectation if they needed it. I mean, I'd have to, they'd have to get their full attention to be working on the sum. And those people could not compound money, a hundred million or a billion at anything remotely like that rate. I mean, there, there are little tiny areas which if you follow what I said on the screen there on that Adam Smith uh, interview a few years ago, if you start with A and you go through and you just, and you look at everything and you find small securities in your area of competence that you can understand the business. I think you can, and, and occasionally find little arbitrage situations or little wrinkles here and there in the market. I think working with a very small sum that there is an opportunity to earn very high returns, but that, that advantage disappears very rapidly as the money compounds because I, you know, from a million to 10 million, I would say it would fall off dramatically uh, uh, in terms of the, because there are, there are little, you, you find very, very small things that, that, you know, you can make and you're almost certain to make high returns on, but you don't find very big things that, in that category today. Uh, I'll leave to you the fun of finding them yourselves. I mean, it'd be terrible to spoil the treasure hunt. Uh, and the truth is I don't look for them anymore. Every now, every now and then I'll stumble into something just by accident, but, but I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not in the business of looking for that. I'm, I'm looking for things that Berkshire can put put its money in, and, and that rules out all of that sort of thing. Uh, uh, Charlie? Well, I would agree, but I would, uh, I would also say that what we did 40 or so years ago was in some respects more simple than what you're going to have to do. Right. We had it very easy compared to you. It can still be done, but... Uh, but it's, it's harder now. You have to know more. I mean, just 
sifting through the manuals until you find something that's selling at two times earnings. Uh, that won't work for you. It'll work, it's just you won't find any. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Buffett mentions it is possible to generate up to 50% returns annually on a smaller portfolio, but he personally only knows a dozen people who might be able to do it. And the caveat is, that can only be done if they dedicate all their time and energy to it. In order to have a chance to achieve returns that exceed the returns of an index fund, you have to be prepared to put in the work and time to find stocks that are undervalued. This is getting exceedingly harder to do as information is so readily available for everyone, and there are even computer programs that are searching for undervalued stocks by different metrics. In the internet age, be careful of stock pickers that advertise a quick and easy way to make money or the best stock to become rich. Hope you guys found this video helpful. I plan to put together more videos that will allow investors to learn the lessons from the greatest investors of all time. In the internet age, we have access to information that can make us all informed investors. I will dig through all the noise and provide you with quality investing lessons every investor needs. If that's the type of content you enjoy, leave a comment below, like, and subscribe. Have a great one.